and Judd almost found themselves going off the road in miserable conditions that sent the few spectators who braved the storm scurrying for whatever shelter they could find. Etienne Lawrence and Robert Paisley were now back among the midfield runners in the team total Toyota Conquest, while Chad van der Volt and Cindy Harding were less than 20 seconds behind teammates Havoc and Judd in second place. Race cam action here is from the Hergen Feck and Dave Lukovic's Motorpix Toyota Corolla, and they almost came to grief when the car aquaplaned off the road. That cost them 40 seconds, and it wasn't much fun for hardy spectators or crews. The Feck and Lukovic incident saw rival Toyota pair Jean-Pierre Damso and Johan Klaassen move ahead of the Motorpix car, and even a hugely experienced crew like Hannes Krobler and Brian Duncan were not exempt from near disaster in the treacherous conditions. of the PMC rally and in the leading Sassel VW Golf a little early dissension between Jan Havoc and Doug Judd over which route they should follow. Right, forklift, forklift, straight on, straight on. No, it's up here. No, it's not. Well, the arrows go this way, Doug. This thing is wrong. And the tracks are up here. 17.6. Okay. Well, it happens in the best of families. Crews were back in the Bronco Sprite and Vitbank areas on day two, and after the deluge in the area the night before, conditions in what were predominantly Millifield special stages were not going to be easy. With slippery road surfaces and plenty of water around, mistakes that could be costly were going to be easy to make. Chad van der Volt and Cindy Harding started the day 41 seconds behind Havoc and Judd and had over a minute in hand over Serge Damso and Guy Hodgson in the dealer team Toyota Corolla. Once again, no one was expecting any fireworks from Damso and Hodgson and such was their gentle pace the day before that a media wag suggested that Hodgson take a book along with him to while away the time. Superb car control from Damso, but a tight right-hander through a farm gate posed a few problems for those behind the factory Toyota. Damso's son, Jean-Pierre, and Johan Klaassen were fourth overnight in the dealer team Toyota Corolla, but a miscalculation produced an overshoot at the gate. The slight deviation didn't cost them much time, and then along came Hergen Fecken and Dave Lukovic in the Motorpix Toyota Corolla. A lone video sport cameraman knew when he was onto a good thing, and in a carbon copy of the Damso Klaassen mistake, Fekin and Lukovic also lost a few seconds. Fekin and Lukovic started the day 21 seconds behind the team total pair, but only had six seconds to spare over Class A7 leaders, Tony Ball and Marty Olafier in the Bulwer Park VW Golf. Ball and Olafier altered the script a little, and instead of completely overshooting the gate, needed a little three-point turn to get them pointed in the right direction. Fear went into the second day of the PMC rally in a dead heat with Barry Krobler and Mike Burrows in the third Sassel VW Golf, running in Class A8. Consistency is a forte where Krobler and Burrows are concerned, but this time around they made a complete mess of the plot. Well, first they completely overshot the turning and went disappearing down the road. An about face with plenty of help from the handbrake got them pointed in the direction from which they'd just come, and again they went sailing past the turnoff. The handbrake was called into action once more, and by the time Hobbler and Burroughs got it right, they dropped precious seconds to the Bulwer Park Golf. I can't understand how we got the punch here, but there was a cattle grid and a reverse fork which we pulled the handbrake and seemed to hook the tire off the rim. So we went for about 8 k's. Okay, so it's one of those things, like he was in the front tyre. A puncture on the first special stage of the day could easily have thrown a very large spanner in the Toyota works, but Serge Damso and Guy Hodgson survived the scare to rejoin the fray on what was turning into a very muddy battlefield. The second stage of the day had to be cancelled because of a flooded river, and in other stages, crews had to contend with more than slippery road surfaces and plenty of water and mud. Huge sprays of water and mud signalled the approach of rally leaders Jan Havoc and Douglas Judd with the Sassel VW Golf slipping and sliding all over the place. Multiple former Class A7 champions, Chad van der Volt and Cindy Harding, form one of the longest-standing driver and co-driver partnerships in South African rallying. 
The pair were enjoying their best outing of the season in the second Sassel VW Golf and looked to be assured of a podium finish. The car saw Jan Havik and Douglas Judd to the South African Championship in 1998, but a string of niggly mechanical and other problems hampered Van der Valt and Harding throughout the year. The Sassel VW crew had a handy lead over Serge Damso and Guy Hodgson, but hardly had to keep looking over their shoulders. Damso and Hodgson were thinking of nothing but survival and a high enough finish to secure Damso his eighth South African Drivers' Championship. Not that survival was easy in the conditions, with long stretches of water providing all crews with some anxious moments. Behind the factory Toyota, the team total entry in the hands of Jean-Pierre Damso and Johan Klaassen was hanging on to fourth place, with the crew making a strong recovery after a dreadful start to the season, where they picked up four non-finishes in a row. It was inevitable that the conditions would sooner or later trap a crew or two. In terms of the overall Group N Championship, no one could have foreseen the drama that was to later unfold. And it was the unfortunate Hergen Fekin and Dave Lukovic who were the first to succumb. After their long layoff, Fekin and Lukovic were challenging strongly for a top five finish when the Motopix Toyota Corolla expired in one of the long drifts of deep water that was scattered throughout the day two route. The Motopix Toyota was going nowhere, but behind them, Class A7 leaders Tony Ball and Marty Olafier in the Bulwark Park VW Golf were coming under pressure from Nissan Sentra pair Johnny Gemmel and Errol Finnis and Nico Ninarbor and Mario Stjernkab in another VW Golf. Ball and Olafier were assured of winning the Class A7 championship, but were losing ground to both Gemmel and Finnis and Ninarbor and Stjernkab. And then came one of those incidents on which championships are won and lost. A puncture on the first stage of the day cost Hannes Krobler and Brian Duncan four minutes and dropped them behind Group N championship rivals Dean Saunders and Graham Hooper. The total Bridgestone pair were trying to make up time when they arrived at the spot where Fekin and Lukovic were stranded. Grobler and Duncan tried to bypass the obvious route and it turned out to be a major error. The Nissan Sentra bogged down, Grobler and Duncan were out of the event and hopes of capturing the overall Group N Championship lay in tatters. And all Dean Saunders and Graham Hooper had to do to win the Group N Championship was see out the distance. They were well on their way to doing just that and were ahead of Johnny Gemmel and Errol Finnis who'd now moved ahead of Tony Ball and Marty Olafia in the Class A7 battle. In their first season of national rallying, Gemmel and Finnis won Class A7 on the Gauteng Rally earlier in the season, but hopes of a second win were to be dashed when they had to retire the Nissan with a broken gearbox on special stage 13. Plowing along behind them were Nienaber and Stienkamp in the Hencom Motorsport VW Golf. A sterling day two effort after a slow start to the PMC had seen the pair move into the top 10 from 17th place overnight. Into the closing stages of the PMC rally with Jan Havik and Doug Judd upping the pace a little to pull just over a minute clear of Sassel VW Golf teammates Chart van der Volt and Cindy Harley. 300 turn off, 90 right through gate. 200 turn off, 90 right through gate. On the bend, on the bend, turn off, 90 right through gate. Tight, 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 tight. Havoc and Judd were still prone to a minor lapse here and there, but they had in the bag the win they were looking for at the start of the event. The Sassel VW golf team were putting the finishing touches to a 1-2 result, with Chad van der Volt and Cindy Harding finally showing their true potential. They were around three minutes clear of Serge Damso and Guy Hodgson, who were now coasting towards Damso's eighth South African driver's title and a slice of rally history. No 1.6-litre car has ever won the South African Championship, and Damso's triumph vindicated Toyota's controversial decision at the start of the year to withdraw from Class A8 and campaign in the Toyota Corolla RSI in Class A6. At the same time, there was disappointment for Hodgson, who was going to finish second to Judd in the Co-Drivers' Championship. Another good event for the Damso family saw Jean-Pierre Damso and Johan Klaassen firmly entrenched in fourth position in the team total Toyota Corolla. In the closest fight on the PMC, the Class A7 battle was headed for a grandstand finish. New champions Tony Ball and Marty Olafia won the war but lost the final battle and were beaten by just 10 seconds by Nico Ninava and Marius Stjernkamp, who notched up their first ever national championship class win. Havoc and Judd and Ball and Olafia gave Volkswagen both the Class A8 and A7 championships, with Damso and Hodgson taking Class A6. The Toyota Cup was starting to run over, with Dean Saunders and Graham Hooper putting the finishing touches to the overall Group N title and the Class N2 championship. Saunders and Hooper were chased home in the Class N2 title race by Kubus Ruiz and Neil Faree in the Toyota Corolla, with the pair just missing out on closing their season with a top 10 finish. 
Down in Class N1, Mike Houghton and Brian Doherty in the Toy Toy Spares Toyota Taz closed off their season with a win over Team Total Toyota Taz pair Rodney Vasaki and Carolyn Swan. Vasaki and Swan had already made sure of back-to-back -back national titles in Class N1. While down in Class N3, there was a popular but unexpected maiden national win for Mervyn and Theo Turton in a Nissan Sentra. The pair were eventually classified ahead of Jeff Mortimer and Jerry Hedeker in the Sassel Nissan Sentra, with the veteran pair twice deciding to call it a day, only to keep going when they saw other Class N3 competitors run into trouble. The final classification was seven VW Golfs in the top ten, and Sanders and Hooper the only Group N team to feature on the front page of the leaderboard. Third overall was enough to give Serge Damso his eighth South African Drivers' Championship, with Toyota making sure of their place in the history books by winning the championship in a Class A6 car. In the overall Drivers' Championship, Serge Damso finished 12 points clear of Yanni Havoc, with Etienne Lawrence and Chad van der Valt next up. Douglas Judd salvaged VW honour by snatching his third co-drivers title ahead of Guy Hodgson and Robert Paisley. Everyone thought that our year would be very easy and it turned out to be very, very difficult. Now, uh, we had two non-finishes which didn't help our championship very much and uh, the consequence of that was we won all the other ones that we'd finished but we didn't score enough points. So, uh, yeah, we got to be maybe satisfied with the second second position in the championship. But, you know, that's the way it works in, in rallying and uh, we've got to look forward to next year now. Definitely uh, didn't think a uh, chance this year winning the championship. But uh, I must thank my team, uh, to, you know, Wayne and his uh, guys that built the car. They did a fantastic job and uh, amazing little car. A dramatic end to the Group N Championship. In a grandstand finish, Dean Saunders and Graham Hooper gave Toyota another national title ahead of the unfortunate Hannes Frobler and Brian Duncan. I mean, the tension yesterday and today was unbelievable. I mean, we... Hannes got a puncture and we got ahead of him by four minutes. It was very close before that. And then we sl slowed down a little bit too much, I think, and he took a minute off us. And starting the following stage after that was like starting a rally about five years ago. You know, the tension was unbelievable. Um, but anyway, we've made it through and excellent. We fought the whole year for this. This is what we've been trying to achieve for this whole year and we've done it and it's amazing.